So in last week's tutorial, we derived the vector Poisson's equation. And somebody asked the question, what the scalar potential version of Poisson's equation looks like. Uh, so in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the scalar potential version of Poisson's equation. Uh, the starting point will be Gauss's law, or like in most cases, Maxwell's equations. So you recall that this is just the divergence of d equals rho v. Um, the second thing we're going to need is this expression for the electric field that we derived last week in the tutorial. Uh, if you were not at the tutorial, I would suggest going to the video for tutorial 3 so that you can see where this equation comes from. So we have Gauss's law and we have the electric field equation. So the roadmap is just going to be this. We're going to substitute E into Gauss's law. Now we know we can relate um, d and e simply with epsilon and therefore we can express Gauss's law in terms of e. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we get epsilon e equals rho v. So now since we know that uh, epsilon is a constant because we're dealing with um, you know, those linear non um, or linear isotropic homogeneous type regions, uh, we know we can divide epsilon out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this divergence of E uh, and I'm going to divide rho V by epsilon, simply just dividing both sides by epsilon. Now also what I need to do is I need to substitute E now into this equation. So I get that this divergence of minus the gradient of v minus partial derivative of a with respect to d, or sorry, with respect to t, I should say, uh, is going to be substituted there. And so this is just rho v over epsilon. Now what happens when I actually expand this uh, gradient and divergence uh, sort of into the bracket uh, is I get this, uh, del squared v minus the partial derivative with respect to time of the divergence of a. Now, for those of you that were at the tutorial last week uh, on Friday, uh, you will know that we had this condition. Well, let's write it this way. So I'll say recall. For some reason, my pen's kind of coming out. Uh, that this divergence of a is equal to minus uh, mu epsilon d del v over del t and or I should say uh, the way we saw it last week was in terms of frequency so we had this j omega instead of the derivative mu epsilon and then we have v so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in this Lorentz condition we called it into this uh, equation I have up here so I have this we call Laplacian or del squared, whatever you want to call it, um, with this partial derivative. Um, and we have minus mu epsilon partial v over partial t equals rho v over epsilon. Okay, now what I can do is, uh, in this second term here, I can go ahead and bring this partial derivative inside. So I'll have a second order partial derivative on the inside. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so this stays the same, and so the minus and minus is going to become a plus, then I have mu epsilon, and I have this partial squared v over partial squared, or partial t squared. Uh, and then this here is just going to be rho v over epsilon, as it was before. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that negative sign at the beginning, because we usually like our equations to start with positive. So I'm just going to divide out that negative. Oh, what's happening there? Just going to divide out that negative, mu epsilon, partial squared over partial t squared. And this is going to be minus rho v over epsilon. And so this equation here, we call Poisson's equation uh, in terms of the scalar potential. Now, if you recall, 
Um, we actually, the one we derived, uh, well, this one's going to be in time domain, but if you look at the equation for the vector potential, it's almost identical. Uh, and this is the vector potential, I'll call it PE, but I'm pre PE is just abbreviating Poisson's equation. Now the thing to note here, and it's definitely interesting, is that I don't know if you recall what the wave equation looks like, but the wave equation looks very similar to these equations we've just derived here. And we also know that we can relate V to E and A to H. So, I mean, the thing to take away from these equations is that these equations are also a different form of the wave equation. They're just being expressed with different variables. Um, I mean, we can express it in terms of E, we can express it in terms of H, but then we know we can relate E to V, and we can relate H to A. So the, the, the point I'm trying to get to is that you should really look at it, this as one giant thing, as opposed to, you know, different smaller things. Like, you might have, oh, okay, so here's the Poisson's equation, and then here you have the wave equation. The, the, the thing to take away is that they're really just the same thing being expressed in different uh, ways, using different variables under different conditions. So I hope you found this video helpful, um, and we'll see you in the next one.